are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Happy fall, and thank you for tuning in to Weha Mag TV here on Channel 5, West Hartford Community Television. My name's Tom Hickey. I'm one of the hosts this evening, and I'm uh, surrounded uh, by all of the business leaders in our community throughout West Hartford, and I'll let them introduce themselves as we come together on a monthly basis. We try to come together on a monthly <laughs> basis uh, to let you know everything that's happening uh, throughout the town of West Hartford. Let's start with Robin. I'm Robin Everson. I'm with Deline Flooring, and I am the secretary of the Home Design District of West Hartford. Great, and I forgot to say that I was with West Hartford Magazine and WeHad.com. Hi, I'm Barbara Karski. I'm the co-owner of BK and Company, and I am the president of the West Hartford Center Business Association. And I am Barbara Lerner, and I am the executive director of the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce. And co-host. And co-host co of this extraordinaire. wonderful show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Pinderis, and I'm the owner of Effie's Place Restaurant on Park Road, and also the co-president of the Park Road Association. And I'm Ronnie Newton. I'm the managing editor of WeHad.com. Great. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. I know uh, it gets crazy. We started the discussion today by saying, what are we talking about? And just saying, my goodness, it's the holidays. Uh, but before we do that, we don't have a lot of time uh, to talk about the past. But I did just want to um, acknowledge and thank once again um, all of the people in West Hartford uh, who participated in the Best of West Hartford. This was the second annual Best of West Hartford. Uh, your vote is what determines who the nominees are, uh, who the finalists are, and who the winners are. Uh, and I probably say that a hundred times a week, but I'm going to keep saying it until it sinks in. Uh, that's the one thing that differentiates this uh, Best of from many other Best ofs that exist uh, in the marketplace. And just over uh, Barbara Lerner's shoulders, um, we have uh, a little thank you uh, uh, to all of our sponsors uh, from this year uh, and look forward to having you join us next year. The only thing different about next year than what we've done for the first two years is that it will be on a Wednesday evening. Uh, so it will be Wednesday evening this year. So many of the businesses are open on Thursday nights. Uh, so and difficult for some of the restaurant tours mm -hmm. uh, to be able to join us. So we're going to move it to a Wednesday. Uh, more details to come about that later. So thanks for tuning in. And I thought maybe what we would do uh, in the fairness of uh, Elizabeth Zygmunt from Blueback Square, uh, who could not join us today. Uh, I actually thanked her for keeping her cold uh, to herself. Hope you're feeling yeah. better, Elizabeth. Uh, but um, I had told her, and she thought it was okay, if Ronnie, maybe you just gave us an update on some of the new dining establishments that you know about in Blueback Square. Yeah, so, well, I hope Elizabeth's not going to get mad. I hope I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> misrepresent anything. Um, but uh, there are two new restaurants that um, will be opening sometime in November. They're scheduled to open middle to no later than the end of November, definitely before Thanksgiving. Um, one is the Cook and the Bear, and that's at the corner of Raymond Road and Isham, and in the former uh, Counter Burger Pearl's Grill space. And Cook and the Bear is a collaboration between um, Millwright, so Tyler Anderson, who's a very highly acclaimed chef, um, kind of a fine dining chef, is collaborating with Jamie McDonald of Bear Smokehouse to create an upscale type um, barbecue place. I've heard they're going to have ramen. I heard they're going to stay open late and try to, you know, keep keep the food available late so that others from other restaurants after their service is done can can go there to eat. Um, and that, that should be opening in the middle of November and haven't seen the inside yet, but it should be very exciting. And um, the other one right next door is, um, originally it was gonna be named Tali and um, 
same, no, no change in the ownership from when it was first announced, but it's going to be called India, India West Hartford, and it's going to be um, kind of scratch made Indian foods with, you know, just kind of a, a really interesting twist and all fresh local ingredients, emphasis and on local Tali ingredients. Tali was is out of New Haven, correct? Um, it's the same owner, chef. Yes. And I'm Why gonna, the name I'm gonna change, not just... say his name right. Well, he's he opened a he opened a restaurant in New Canaan, and he kind of switched off the concept of his own restaurant and changed the name from Tali to India. Oh, okay. And I think he's going to just keep that same name mm -hmm. for West Hartford, mm -hmm. and um, Prasad. Chernomula, and I'm pretty sure that's the correct um, pronunciation. It seems like a great guy, and he's very excited about coming into the West Hartford market. That's and then we also understand that there's going to be a pop-up um, game store of some sort in the former uh, Lucy, Lucy spot, Lucy. and uh, that, that should be opening sometime this season, maybe by the time you're watching the show. And I'm sure everyone read about this on WeHunt.com, but there was a dog or pet store that also went in, correct? Right. Wolfgang opened up, and that's um, in the former Munson space. So on the north side, or now the west side of Isham, um, close to um, the courtyard. Yeah, Wolfgang is not just a pet store. They, they do also a lot of do grooming. grooming. And that's oh, a big that. part of their business. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. and I've read a couple of reviews already. They've um, been getting really great good reviews. reviews. Really cute dogs coming out of there with great bandanas. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the, you know the pets are welcome. Yeah, so. it's totally well, about, that's nice because it's all walking room. distance mm -hmm. because pet uh, pet care right is the vet specialist just around the corner next to Whole Foods. Right. So that's great. It, it's a really a nice different addition mm -hmm. to Bluebeck Square. Um, I have eaten in. Um, Tali in New Haven, the food is really mm -hmm. fabulous. So I'm looking forward to India mm -hmm. opening. Um, and it's actually, it's at the corner of Raymond and Memorial. So there is another business going into the corner of Raymond and Aisham, which is the uh, Japanese oh, yeah, food right. store. The market. The market, oh. Japanese, right, market. Japanese market. Or at least that's what the sign says. Right, it yeah. is. It's, um, okay. It is a Japanese food store. It's, um, and I'm sorry for misstating. I get those streets. I know, it's very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> because they curve around and run into <laughs> each other. But yes, it is Memorial and, and Raymond Road. Um, Muruichi, I think it's, it's called. Um, it's actually the same owner as Fuji Mart. Which sounds like a gas station market, but it's it's a convenience store. But it's it's way way more than that. Um, located in Greenwich, and they're bringing that concept to West Hartford. So it's all um, Japanese products and um, teas, and especially imported Japanese coffees. Which I, I didn't even realize that you know coffee was kind of a, a big commodity in Japan, but it, but it is. And that mm. should be opening um, sometime this year, also sometime they, before the end of the year. They have so many customers in this area that have them ship product from Greenwich to here in Western Massachusetts mm. that they thought they should have a store in this area, wow. which is, who knew? It's really no. a, an interesting Well, it's concept. funny because you made me think of it at the Weha Whiskey Festival a couple weekends ago, the number one new, uh, I'll get this wrong too, a maximum beverage will be mad at me, but uh, Japan was the number one importer of a lot of the whiskeys and bourbons that were being featured that night, which I didn't know either. So, interesting. And and we, go ahead. I was going to say, we've, just had the Halloween stroll, yes, which right. is always a wonderful event here in town with all the kids in costumes. <laughs> so uh, it was Saturday the Maybe we should 28th. do costumes next year. We're not, for anyone wondering, we're not in costume. <laughs> 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 That so thousands of parents and kids running through town, trick-or-treating, mm -hmm. um, lots of entertainment. So there's really a full schedule. Great. Well, let's keep talking about the chamber then. Let's keep okay. going. Well, well, the, ch the chamber always has lots on their schedule. <laughs> yeah. um, twice a month, the first and third Friday of the month, we do our connections meeting, which has grown from 20 to 40 to 50 to 70 mm. attendees. So it's a, an incredible networking group. And I have to tell you, for anyone listening, I went for the first time, not that you haven't reminded me a hundred times to go <laughs> and to get involved, but it was, the, it was the Friday before Labor Day weekend. Uh, so I went in to talk about Best of West Hartford. And I'm telling you, at 7.30 in the morning on the Friday of Labor Day weekend, there were 70 people, you know, 70 business owners in that room. It was, I was blown away. It was amazing. And since then, I've had two different business relationships that have come out of just that one 
that one visit. And that's what's so nice about yeah, the group. Was, I mean, it's it about making good. friends and connections, not yeah. necessarily doing immediate business. Right. Yeah. Um, it's getting your name and your business and yeah. your face, you know, out in front of a large group of people. So we're, we're, we're very proud of our mm. connections meetings, really one of our largest group meetings. So if you want more information, you can go to our website <laughs> at www.whchamber.com. Um, we're also working on um, a business after hours on November 17th at Grants. So if you're a chamber member, please come. If you're not, you can come as my guest. Just use my name at the door. <laughs> um, but it's always fun to go to a business in the center. And uh, they're very excited to host us. You would think they would be you know, jam-packed. No, don't do that. Nope. Bring, bring, all, bring everybody, you know, come. We'll Great. give you the back of the restaurant. And, uh, and for members, enjoy. it's not a charge. No charge. No charge for members. Charge it's for non-members? $10, $10 for non-members. Okay. Non okay. um, but again, if you're interested in joining the chamber, <laughs> use my name. Um, <laughs> and then now we're working on the holiday stroll. Uh, unbelievable. So we use that as a segue into sure. the center? Let's talk about it for a little bit. <laughs> okay, before we get to the holiday stroll, we've got to talk about a couple of exciting okay. things in November. Um, November 10th through the 20th is uh, 10 days of giving. This year it's going to be for food share, so you can purchase your card for $30, and that allows you a 20% discount at any of the participating merchants in town. And we can say it's it's really replacing kids' cards kids card. this year. It is. So that, that, that was done for CCMC for many, many years. Yes. Right. And 100% right. of that $30 goes, goes right, to right to food share, right to which food buys food. a lot of food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a big need, a big demand, and we're really excited to host that event and to be able to give back to the local community. Um, I always love it, Small Business Saturday. Um, it's just a great time to go out and support your local merchants, so I, I always encourage everyone to think about their favorite local uh, merchant, and we always want our local merchants to stay in town, so go out there and support them on um, Small Business Saturday. Uh, American Express has already started plugging it, and they do offer credits. Um, so look for your favorite, like I said, look for your favorite merchant and see if they've signed up, and you can get a credit on your uh, American Express card um, if you purchase at that uh, location on Small Business Saturday. Um, and then finally in November, Power of Purple. We've been doing this is the third or fourth year that we've done Power of Purple. Light up the um, center for uh, the week that has on uh, November 17th, which is a Thursday, that week everybody puts purple lights in their window and it is to bring awareness for pancreatic cancer. And we have been doing that for three or four years now and each year it gets bigger and bigger, more purple lights. We've got the purple banners up and um, on November 17th there is um, merchants in town will host different, again, uh, different sales, different events in their uh, in their establishments, and uh, the money raised goes for pancreatic cancer. And that research. is sponsored by the Ron Foley Foundation. The Ron Foley Foundation, mm -hmm. correct. So, like pink is for breast cancer in October, purple is for pancreatic, pancreatic cancer in November. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes. And is that a, can that be a town wide thing, or is that just the center right now? Oh, uh, it's town wide. Town -wide. I mean, they they reach out. They have, so they put that they put, yeah. they put a big purple banner up on the Etna going. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. I had down seen 84 that. Yeah. And, um, it started with just lighting up um, Stoner Drive, which is right. where Ron Foley right. lived, mm. um, all in purple lights. Right, mm. right. But it's it's grown since then. Mm. That's really, yeah. Excellent. It's a great, great. event. Um, and then just in town, we have a couple new businesses as well. We have a great new uh, pizzeria, Savoy, which opened on Thursday of um, in October. And, and did um, everyone read about Queen Savoy oh, on Queen Savoy. Com? Margarita. Queen Margarita. Queen Margarita. <laughs> Queen Margarita <laughs> yeah. from Savoy. I'm yeah. sorry. Queen Margarita from Savoy. Which is why I had to eat a margarita pizza first. <laughs> right. Because how could I not? Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like too much information. <laughs> that was good. It's, it's so nice when your kids will only eat a cheese pizza, right? <laughs> well, if you order the margarita, right. you get a little basil on it. It makes it more palatable <laughs> for the adults, I think. And the kids can take the leaf off. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then Hartford Baking Company is opening sometime late November, early December. We have the Noble coming. We have a Mediterranean restaurant coming. So we are going to just definitely be the destination uh, for great fine dining. Um, and I, I moved my business. I was going to say that so that's good. <laughs> that was so fun. You know how fun moving is. I don't know, how long do they say it takes you to recover from moving? Years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I moved 18 years ago, and I'm not moving yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm on Farmington Avenue now. I'm loving it. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so the center is changing. A lot of great, new, exciting 
um, places coming. Um, looking forward back to the holiday stroll. Um, December 1st, we have all the usual fun and exciting things. We have the horse-drawn carriage. We have the tree lighting and blue bag. We'll have the showmobile. We'll have lots of entertainment on the street and on the showmobile. There'll be entertainment in the uh, businesses, the stores and the restaurants in town. Uh, we have the fire department with their fire truck. Um, Upper Farmington Avenue is going to be doing the marshmallows and the fire pits again out on the street, which the fire department just loves. <laughs> but they, they now park the fire truck right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's so much fun because yeah, the fun. kids get to <laughs> roast marshmallows yeah. and do s'mores and yeah. all sorts of things. But so on every area of the center between Blueback Square and um, West Hartford Center, there'll be something happening. And I don't know if we'll be as lucky as last year. Remember, it was 60 degrees. It was a great day. <laughs> it was so absolutely beautiful. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so who it knows what beautiful. will happen. And I just found out about this before we went on air uh, today that um, uh, a little bird media cat who works with Avair uh, and Treva uh, in the center is going to do a, a flash mob ugly sweater. Uh, flash mob. Ugly <laughs> that, night, sweater. that night? Flash mob that night. Uh, 25 professional dancers. Um, and they'll actually join us on the showmobile at some point as well. Uh, and they'll be doing this ugly sweater flash oh, mob. Oh, I love that. Uh, <laughs> so cool. You know, fun, you know, Should we all wear ugly idea. sweaters too? Yes. Maybe we should. Yeah, yeah, oh, good. I need to borrow right? one. <laughs> Absolutely. I can give you one. <laughs> good. And, uh, and I'm not quite sure what we'll do with this show, but last year, uh, Barbara and I actually uh, rode the horse drawn carriage. Um, around the center, and the only information I got back from anyone was that they, they thought that we had been enjoying ourselves too much uh, <laughs> while going around the, on the carriage, and we really not weren't. True. It was not, yeah, not true at all. Yeah. It, was just, it was just a little crazy, but a lot of fun. We so. were just high on the energy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and hopefully we'll have a few other surprises. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but again, this will all be on the Chamber website and on yep. the West Office Center Business Association Absolutely. website. Probably Bluebacks as well. And Bluebacks yeah. and in wehi.com. We so there'll it. be plenty of places we'll to covered. get the information. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and sure. it's, uh, we will have posters and flyers out too. But I want to mm -hmm. welcome Robin with us today oh, from the nice. Home Design District. That's nice. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> being here. <laughs> So for those who may not know, mm -hmm. tell us what the Home Design District is. Well, the Home Design District is a group of home improvement related businesses. We do have a few associate members that are not necessarily home improvement, but that kind of believe in what we're doing, um, kind of to brand the area, bring more retail into the area that used to be fairly industrial. Um, and so a lot of the businesses have banded together. We do a lot of uh, referrals between each other. Um, in but it's defined as in, in New Park Avenue area. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, really defined by um, New Britain Ave on one end and Flatbush on the other. But there's a lot of businesses down along New Park and off like on Talcott and things like that. And we have people who do uh, exteriors specifically with Bartlett Brainerd. We have Coastal Tool who's involved. Raymond Flanagan is one of our members who does the, obviously the furniture. Uh, I'm with Deline Flooring. We do all kinds of flooring. Tile America across the street with their tile. Um, I mean, just everybody. There's a ton of businesses, and uh, you can certainly go to uh, our website, which is homedesigndistrict.com, and all the members are listed there. Um, but we're all we're all working on trying to improve the area, bring other businesses in. And we're really excited because we're we are now up to 17 businesses. Which when we started, we were at 10, bringing in new members, and we have a brand new member in uh, shower door and window, uh, which now gives us two because we also had Connecticut shower and bath. Um, so we have all sorts of different home improvement businesses that you can, uh, you know, come to see people who have a lot of. Um, experience and expertise in the area. Now, so. Ronnie, I, had talk, I was talking to you this morning because I had heard something about a new business in that area. Can we talk about that or do you think we should... Uh, that might be coming. We don't know for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think we better. We, we better, better, better just wait. wait. I don't, I don't okay, now I got everybody. Wondering. Wondering. <laughs> 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 but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny in town. We we talk about different areas mm. having cycles. I think mm. we're really in an yeah. incredible cycle in the mm. New Park area, yeah. New Park um, mm. Avenue area, and the Home Design District. It also encompasses part of the Elmwood Business yeah. Business yeah. District, mm -hmm. because there's so much development going on there, and and it's actually a place where there's developable 
people land, mm -hmm. which there isn't right. a lot of in West Hartford. Right. Right. So they've seen a tremendous resurgence yeah. right. in traffic. And, and, and the most, most all the members are represented with the business owners. I happen to be with Deleen's, which has six different locations. We're actually getting a brand new store in Manchester, so very excited about that. But um, in the, you know, especially in that area, most of these businesses on average have a history of about 20 years, um, many of them. So you've got people who really know their craft mm -hmm. and they're very experienced. The installers are experienced and you know they know soup to nuts about right. what they do. Well, we can talk about, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I read about this, uh, we can talk about uh, New Park Avenue being uh, redesigned. Correct? Well, somewhat. I somewhat. haven't yeah. had a it's, lot of it's, information it's on that detail. It's part of the detail. complete streets and okay. traffic calming. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So they're all looking to do some traffic calming on New Park Ave and maybe put an island in the middle with trees and la you know landscape it and mm -hmm. make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. Because right now the Connecticut Transit stations look very nice. They I do. mean, they were a vast improvement sure. there. And now there's housing going in. Yeah. Um, the West Hartford Housing Authority is building, I Six think it's... 616 New Park. 616 New Park. 616 New Park. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, they are building that groundbreaking should be taking, taking place yep. they, sometime before the end of the year. Yeah. They were and just that's waiting, the old Pontiac Center. Correct. Right. They were just waiting right. for financing yep. to, to be complete and signed, and it is now. Mm -hmm. So they should yeah. be having a groundbreaking ceremony, yeah. I think, pretty shortly. I mean, they need to do the It was supposed to be in early October, but it was put off, so the finances were finalized. There wasn't a problem. Now they're all done. All for those who don't remember, that's right across the street from Butler, Hartford Baking Company, that year adjacent to Oscars and Argelia. So it, it's going to be yeah. a really walkable, yes. livable, yeah, really. walkable area. Yeah. So yeah. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're thinking that we'll be seeing many more businesses going to that area. Yeah. Well, okay. and it's also going to tie in, you know, so the, the hope as part of the um, the redevelopment of, of the streetscape itself is to make it more pedestrian friendly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to tie it in with the Trapbrook Trail, right. which starts mm -hmm. like right next to Hartford mm -hmm. Baking Company. Mm -hmm. And really goes all the way up to what it's still the Yukon property. What will be maybe something else eventually, <laughs> but uh, yeah. they're they're going to be adding that extra piece from where it it ends on Trapbrook right now, and you have to cross the street and go on the sidewalk or in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. They're going to extend that all the way to Park Road, and um, and that money has been um, allocated to that. Mm -hmm. And then the whole intersection of Park Road and I eighty four that exit 43 intersection is being redesigned mm -hmm. and they're going to make that more pedestrian friendly too and have um, it'll be an at grade crossing but the bike trail will cross mm -hmm. over there and, and that probably is happening do. while this is airing right because um, isn't no the not, utility not work is, is oh. probably happening right now but okay. the actual road construction won't start until the spring and oh, speaking good. of park okay. road park there we go. <laughs> what a segue wow <laughs> we're getting pretty good at this yeah. <laughs> well the park road is uh, can, is continuing on its stable pathway. It's it's doing well. It just kind of chugs along, and and, uh, and and we're doing well. Uh, we just we're just coming off of our parade that we had uh, mm -hmm. back in October, which we nearly had to cancel again. Um, but rain. we decided to go after three months of no rain. rain uh, right? Oh my yeah. gosh! Right, exactly. <laughs> the first rainy weekend we had in months. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, we decided to move forward with it, and we're glad we did. The crowd, uh, you know, was was far better than we thought it was going to be, um, and. We received so many emails and calls after the parade thanking us for doing it, thanking us for uh, for putting it on this year and so forth. That um, that we're you know very excited about doing it again next year. So that was great. Uh, we we also have a, a new restaurant coming in. Um, it's called Park and Oak, um, and that that will be open shortly as well. So you know we want to keep up with the center of Blueback with all the new <laughs> restaurants. We have ours too. Um, one of the important things that we're doing in December uh, coming up is, well, Effie's Place does a toy drive every year in conjunction with WDRC. And this year we thought that we would kind of open it up and extend it out. So for, for the month of December, there's going to be many businesses along Park Road and a, a one or two on Park Street and, uh, and also ShopRite is, is going to participate. And you're, they're going to be Toy for Tots drop sites. Mm -hmm. And and on the day that we do the drive at Effie's place, everyone's going to bring their toys there, and the, and the Marine Corps will be picking them up from from there. So it's going to be kind of a a, a, a larger effort um, really throughout nice. the neighborhood. So 
uh, we're expecting a good turnout for that, and we think that we're going to do really, really well for So that. through the whole month of December, do people bring their toys to different businesses? Yes, and, yes. and they, okay. will be listed, uh, they will be listed on our website and Facebook page as well. Okay. Uh, I'm sure I'll be <coughs> listing them for you, yes, too. Yes, and we have that <laughs> column, I'm sure, in the chamber probably, too. So. <laughs> Our little network of, of, uh, of media here. Um, but, yeah, we decided to take a different approach with it. The radio station came up to us and asked if we'd like to kind of expand it for them this year, and I just think this is a great opportunity to kind of get to get it out and encompass more businesses and get them get them involved too. So. Absolutely. So if a business is interested in having a Toys for Tot, it's if, WDRC if, if box? The business, right. It, well, they would have their own box or a DRC box. If the business on Park Road is interested in, in um, participating, they can contact me or Tracy Flater at the Playhouse. Right. And we will make them an official drop point. And what what happens too is it's going to be a small fee for the business, very small. But they also get the advertising throughout those those several weeks on the radio station. It's gonna, they're going to advertise every business that participates. Um, so you, it's a great way to get some radio advertising for for very little money too. Great. And new pizza place? Did I hear, or is that not so new anymore? Uh, there's a new pizza place that opened up uh, a couple weeks ago. Hot Oven okay. Panini and Pizza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I should say a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just just the other the other day, I bought my uh, my my kitchen help pizza from there. It was delicious. I heard their sandwiches are good too. Okay. Uh, and we have the um, the Park and Oak that, that's supposed to be uh, an up upscale comfort food um, place. I believe they're going to have a bar as well. Uh, so that's going to be a nice little addition to the neighborhood. Excellent. Day myself, but many office locations ago, I was on Park Road for 15 years. So one two three Park looks like it's finally opening up some businesses. It was going under a lot of renovation and. Is there something it's coming together? I, I don't know anything about the property no, and, and what what is um, what's coming in, but I'm looking about to stop by and yeah, see it what's looks, going on. Yeah, it looks it looks like something's happening. So okay. great, check that out. It seems like there's not a lot of um, you know if any vacancies that kind of open up on Park Road don't typically stay very long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we get calls and the chamber gets calls about people that are interested in coming into Park Road. And you know they they, they always ask if you, if you hear of anything, please reach out to us and let us know. So. Yeah, there are a couple of restaurants that um, we got a phone call about that are interested in opening on Park Road, and we're working with the town's economic development specialist mm -hmm. to try to find them the appropriate space on the street because it's a, it's a, this is a different concept. There, we don't have a restaurant like this particular phone call that we got in mm -hmm. the area, so it would be really great, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the town would love to have another restaurant. Um, <laughs> But um, I think it would be a great addition on, on Park Road. <coughs> That's it. Well, we have a lot of gyms in town, too. So, you know, yep. the gyms and the restaurants go hand in hand. We do have a new yoga, a fairly new yoga studio on Park Road as well. There's a, there's a oh, couple Star of yoga, them. Oh, yeah. Star yeah. Yoga, right. Okay. So, and, and we just had um, Orange Theory had mm -hmm. their grand opening in October in Bishop's Corner. And unfortunately, we don't have anybody here from Bishop's Corner we'll to get talk about. Here from, are you listening to Bishop's, Bishop's Corner? Corner. <laughs> <laughs> because they, have, they do have a couple of new businesses there. Uh, yeah. Bell Tone Hearing Aids, which was in Sears and is still in Sears for a short period of time, has opened their own space in Bishop's Corner. Mm -hmm. And they have a tremendous amount of traffic. I was in there to meet them, and we did, did a little ribbon cutting in there, and I could not believe the number of people going in and out yeah, of that business. So Perfect addition yeah. to that area. Um, orange Theory has finally opened their yeah. storefront in Bishop's Corn. You can't miss it. It is orange. That's right. um, well, maybe we could get Signe from Bishop's Corner to come, because uh, in the palette issue, the cover story is about the Bishop's Corner Neighborhood Association trying to brand Bishop's Corner as an arts destination. Uh, and and Signe does all of that for them. And she does all of it for them. Yeah. And it speaks, I, I remember talking to her 15 years ago, you know, that she has sort of had this vision or this idea, and it has more than, you know, come to fruition now. Uh, and, and, so it's really great. And look at the changes at the Crown Supermarket. Yeah. I know Ronnie just wrote something about that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's everything is, is very new there. When I went on that tour, um, they pointed out even... The circuit breaker boxes are new. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so check out the cafe. A, the cafe is new. Something called right? a rack That's has a, has replaced thirty compressors. That's and, amazing. You know, but all the flooring and the ceilings mm -hmm. and the the display cases, they're all brand new. The food is, is well, it's at a higher um, level of of kosher supervision. I'm probably going to say this incorrectly, but it's um, kashruth is a very close. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> is is the level it's at now, but it's it's supervised by um, by an orthodox um, 
okay, group of yes. rabbis. And we're getting the hook again. As oh, always, yeah. we're running out of time. So, <laughs> Could we I know, miss anything this, group, this, group, this group never has a problem talking about things. Uh, the only thing, a selfish plug I just wanted to give, is talking about things happening in the community or, or things that are a first. Um, uh, Wea.com uh, and West River Magazine has partnered with Vineyard Vines uh, to bring private label clothing. It's right over Barbara's shoulder there. Uh, so you can go online to Wea.com and check out the online store. Uh, and for those of you who don't want to go online and look at it, you can go to Silver Dahlia uh, in West Hartford Center on Farmington Avenue as well, who also has a Vineyard Vine uh, section. So uh, think of that for your holiday gifts, along with Shopping Local uh, and all of our business districts uh, throughout West Hartford. Uh, and we'll talk to you, I'm sure, uh, in, in December. We don't know if we'll be from a holiday stroll or somewhere, <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, enjoy living in West Hartford, and we'll see you next month. Thanks. 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 Thanks.